Hello. Uh, in this video, I will show you how to use connectivity component and when ye, you may need to use it. So, connectivity component allows you to activate inactive or kinematic uh, fragments if they are not connected with other fragments or if they are not connected with any of any other fragment. And uh, first, I will start with sim uh, just showing how you just showing to you how uh, inactive fragments work. So, I will start with this simple uh, empty root with a bunch of fragments. And uh, as you can see, every fragment has only a mesh render and mesh, nothing special. So all components right now I have only on this empty root. I have verify rigid component, which I set to ob it made, uh, its object type I set to match root and simulation type to inactive. Also, I have demolition type none, which because I am not going to demolish fragments, only simulate them. Also, I have here verify dust and debris component. So if you have uh, dust and debris component with rigid component with which set to mesh root, uh, when you start, when you initialize this rigid component, it will copy this rigid component and dust and debris component to every fragment. So let me start. Now you can see that all these fragments, they're getting the same rigid component with the same properties, except that now every fragment has object type mesh. And as you can see, there is debris and dust component. So if you just want to test your properties, it's good to use this uh, combination. But uh, obviously, every time you will initialize rigid component, it will have to copy to add component, rigid component, and it will have to add refine debris and dust to every fragment. So it will take some time. So if you if you just test, then you can use this combination. Uh, but uh, when you're happy with your um, all the properties, it's better to apply rigid component and dust and debris uh, to every fragment manually and then create prefab so so uh, it will you will not need to do the, all this uh, unnecessary operations every time you initialize rigid component okay so now uh, since i defined my rigid component as inactive here uh, here uh, is basic um, inactive fragment behavior it just uh, it simulates as dynamic object sorry it simulates as dynamic object, but it's not affected by gravity, and also it has no any uh, velocity, so you can kind of push your fragments. But as you can see, they freeze in the air and not falling down. So this is basic inactive uh, objects behavior, and uh, now let's start activating them. And the first, I will. Uh, Go to activation here, and I will uh, set here activation by offset of 0.3 units. It means that when this fragment will be moved from its original position to distance more than 0.3 units, it will be activated, and it will become fully dynamic object. Here you can see I start moving object, and when they move far enough from their original position, they start falling down. Also, they emit some particles and debris. But as you can see, the next problem here is that if I will just move all, activate all these fragments, there will be a bunch of fragments which just kind of freeze in the air. And obviously, we don't want this to happen. And this is when you need to start to use connectivity component. So it will check uh, this fragment for connectivity with other fragments. And uh, to use it, you need to add connectivity component to the same root. Okay, now uh, here, uh, here you can see that it shows its gizmo to show you what's inside this uh, connectivity. Also, uh, you it, it's also important to go to this uh, column root, to widget component, and uh, on. And turn on here activation by connectivity, otherwise it will not work. So now uh, you it you, you says this activation inside this activation group that you want to convert inactive fragments into dynamic if they are moved for 0 0.3 units or if they are not connected and the connectivity component will check for this connection. So now uh, I can inside this. Um, 
with our connectivity I can set up cluster but it will work only if your fragments already has rigid components so right now they don't have anything so it's just not reasonable to set up anything but if you will uh, apply your rigid component manually then you can set up your cluster and then save it as prefab so you will not need to uh, establish all these connections every time right now I will just uh, start play mode Okay, now you can see it shows you all these uh, spheres which represents the center of the shard and these lines which is uh, connections between them. So, okay, now I can start activating these fragments. Also, let me turn all this clusterize. I will show you later. So, if I will start activating this all these shards now, you can see will start breaking these connections when some uh, shards will be activated but then whole structure will collapse because at some point it will uh, some one group of fragments will lose connection with other group of fragments and both of them will decide to be activated because they are not connected with any of unyielding fragments and to uh, define unyielding fragments you basically need to uh, if you will have let's say a fragment with rigid component then need to go to the same activation group here and turn on this unyielding checkbox but if I will do this inside the, this widget which is mesh root it will just copy this uh, checkbox for every uh, for every fragment uh, so I need to specify only uh, some fragments and to do so again I can use a special component for, for this it's called refire unyielding and so you can just all you need to do is just define some area in this case I will define it at the bottom here uh, you need to overlap some of the fragments which you want to be considered as unyielding so connectivity component will start checking for connection starting from these fragments and if any fragment connected with somehow connected to other fragments with any of unyielding fragments it will not be activated any, any fragments which is, uh, which is not connected it will be activated in and turn into dynamic fragment okay now I will start play again okay now you can see that all unyielding fragments shows you show it shows you as uh, this red circle uh, red spheres and red uh, lines so again if I will start activating my shards now so here you can see some of them acti were activated but the whole structure is not collapsing because it's connected uh, with uh, this unyielding fragments and this unyielding fragments so I will start move this uh, box ag again and you can see again I activated some fragments there so now I have only this uh, structure here which are uh, connected with this unyielding fragments in later builds I'm going to add some kind of stress check so it will crash, it will collapse this kind of uh, structures but for now if, the, if, if there is any kind of connection then uh, nothing will be activated and finally I will break this connection again and you can see the whole structure now collapsed but also another problem is that it was collapsed into basically just simple fragments, whole structure kind of, kind of not looks uh, real so to avoid this you can go to the connectivity again here and turn on clusterize here and this means that every group of uh, inactive fragments which are not connected to any unyielding of fragments they will not simply turn into separate fragments but they will actually become a cluster uh, and will be simulated as one solid object so in this case I'm doing the same breaking this connection now you can see the whole structure starts simulates as one solid object also since it's turned into cluster you can see that it changed its color from red to, uh, to blue from green to blue which means now this is a uh, not just one fragment of rigid component but actually uh, one uh, structure with one rigid component which uh, simulates whole all the fragments and I can again I can maybe do like this you can see that I have here one little cluster 
maybe I will move it up or here and here another cluster here and also I think maybe it's reasonable to decrease my by offset activation because some fragments move too far from the original position kind of float in the air so we can fix this by decreasing by offset let's try again also you need to know that uh, if you activate some fragments let's say I will activate them here as you can see they start falling down uh, they kind of pushing the rest of the fragments let me actually turn off preview Okay, so now I will start activating them. So you can see they, they start falling down even though some fragments were not pushed but they are getting pushed by the fragments which were just activated. So you need to consider this as well. If you start activating something on the top of the structure it may actually activate something at the bottom and if some object will not be activated but still it will be moved and there will be cracks here so next time you will like like in this example you can see that I moved some fragments here and if I will create cluster based on this uh, fragments you can see that it just clusterizes with all these cracks which I think it's, looks nice. Also, you can see that every cluster you create, it's not uh, can it's not demolished any further. Because uh, this is because uh, I have demolishable property inside connectivity component turned off. So if you want your clusters to be demolished uh, during simulation, you can turn on the demolishable. And in this case, it will use uh, the say this uh, limitations properties for your cluster. So maybe solidity value 0 0.1 will be too low, maybe 0 0.3. And it will also use this cluster properties for all the clusters that it will create during this activation. Also, I will turn on preview this time. So you'll see when it will turn into cluster. Okay, now you see it was clusterized, but it was immediately demolished into less lesser clusters. You can see this one here, and some other parts of this cluster was demolished. So maybe let's, uh, it will be better if we will decrease our, actually increase our solidity to make them, make not, not so they won't be so fragile. So this is uh, how connectivity component works and this is why you may need it and when you need to use it. 
In other videos I will show you other ways to use this connectivity component with uh, activator component and with gun. Uh, I guess that's it for now. Thank you for watching.